Hello, my name is Franklin Kuhas. I'm the corresponding author of our recent international multicenter publication on the psychometric evaluation of patient reported outcome data for the treatment of Peyronie's disease. I would like to thank the British Journal of Urology International for highlighting our article. Peyronie's disease and its resulting deformities negatively impact affected patients. The deviated penile axis may directly impair the patient's ability to engage in satisfactory sexual intercourse. Furthermore, studies have shown that the psychological repercussions of Peyronie's disease and its effect on a patient's self-image can be severe, potentially resulting in depressive symptoms, relationship discord, and social isolation. Surgical treatment is often the only treatment modality that will help patients to overcome the consequences of the disease. The aim of this study was to compare patient-related outcome measurements, such as treatment-related satisfaction with three different Peyronie's disease treatment modalities, the Nesbitt procedure, plug incision and grafting, and the insertion of a malleable penile prosthesis following surgical correction of the penile curvature. The study design was retrospective. We used a newly developed non-validated questionnaire to assess patient reported outcomes and six international centers participated for the data collection. 206 patients agreed to participate in this study and answered the questionnaire, resulting in an average response rate of 70%. The Nesbitt procedure plug incision with grafting or implantation of a malleable penile prosthesis was performed in 50, 48 and 108 individuals respectively. Interestingly, the percentage of residual and recurrent curvatures was the highest in the Nesbitt group, although the patients in the Nesbitt group had the lowest degree of curvature. Almost 80% of patients reported to have experienced some sort of penile length loss during the course of Peyronie's disease, ranging from 0.5 to 7 cm. Patients receiving malleable penile implants had a statistically significant shorter mean penile length than those treated with the Nesbitt or grafting procedure. This goes along with the finding that this subgroup of patients reported the greatest length loss during the course of their disease, which shows that erectile dysfunction and Peyronie's disease are independent risk factors for penile length loss. All three treatment modalities for Peyronie's disease resulted in some sort of penile length loss. However, the Nesbitt group was mostly affected, which resulted in the highest BOTA scores. All three therapy modalities led to a significant betterment of the sexual ability of affected men. Interestingly, the grafting procedure was not inferior to the Nesbitt procedure, which indicates that proper preoperative patient selection is mandatory to guarantee best possible outcome. Patients who were treated with a grafting procedure reported similar sexual ability outcomes relative to those undergoing the Nesbitt procedure. An improved overall condition postoperatively was reported by the majority of patients, with the Nesbitt procedure having the lowest satisfaction rate. Patients who were treated with a malleable penile implant and grafting had the highest improvement in their condition. This is not surprising since the restoration of a normal sexual life will restore some quality of life for those patients. This result reflects the high satisfaction with penile implants in current literature. The deformities caused by Peyronie's disease may have detrimental effects on the affected patients, including an impaired ability to engage in satisfactory sexual intercourse. Fears of injuring the penis, difficulties with penetration and difficulties with sexual positions are major concerns associated with the underlying curvature. Our analysis showed that the subjective loss of penile length of more than 2.5 cm is associated with a statistically significant lower satisfaction with the individual's ability to perform sexual intercourse. Therefore, we postulate that patients have to be asked about their subjective loss of penile length due to Peyronie's disease preoperatively. In particular, patients with severe erectile dysfunction who are candidates for penile prosthesis implantation should be asked if they would like to undergo a concomitant penile length restoration procedure such as the modified sliding technique. Patients who are not candidates for penile prosthesis implantation however, cannot be treated with such a radical surgical approach since it will cause erectile dysfunction. We believe that in cases where patients report good preoperative erectile function, a grafting procedure is preferable to a Nesbitt technique because plication techniques will produce further shortening. 
This surgically induced penile shortening is in addition to the length loss that the patient has already experienced due to Peyronie's disease and will most likely cause greater physical and psychological problems for the patient. Thus, a graft procedure should at least be offered to such patients. Proper preoperative patient selection will ensure that the grafting procedure does not lead to postoperative erectile dysfunction. This was shown by our study.